how to take better photos with any camera. That's what this video is all about. So hang out with me and I'll give you some of the strategies that I use when I'm outdoors taking pictures of all the critters out here. Strategy number one is action, action, action. Yes, I just said that three times. Action is important. And if you can capture a moment that shows action in a photo, your viewers will be happy. For example, you might find, you might see a squirrel wandering around, take some photos. Because what you really want to show is that squirrel moving from one place to the next. Like here. Or you can show a snake that's tasting or smelling prey. Check out this photo. Or you can capture that moment when a sparrow is calling to another sparrow. We call it singing, like in this photo. Or mallard swimming. Look at the water and see if you can tell that there's a movement. You don't need a fancy camera or an expensive lens to take great photos. You don't. I know there's lots of stuff out there on the market for you to buy. But let me give you some simple advice. Watch this video, then go outdoors with whatever camera you have and take photos. I'm gonna give you some simple strategies, 10 of them, that I think you'll find very practical and useful. You're not going to have to adjust all the settings on your camera or switch to manual mode or go out and buy a $2,000 lens. Just use what you have. Strategy number two, pay attention to the background. Can you see the trees behind me? Of course you can. That's background. I am in the foreground. I am the subject. So always be considering not just the subject and how the light appears on the subject, but what's in the background. Is it distracting or not? This is a great shot right here because I have bright green trees, leaves. I have bright green leaves behind me. Is this a good shot? How about one where trees poke out of my hat? Is that a good shot? How about there? You always have to think about the background. So look at the background for these photos. The subject is a dragonfly in each photo. And the background, you tell me. Which one distracts you? and which one kind of disappears, which is what you want in the background. You want it to disappear. You want the viewer to focus on the subject. Okay, people often ask me, what settings do I use for my camera? It's simple. I set it for aperture priority, and then I adjust the aperture kind of randomly. Sometimes I open it as wide as I want it, at either 2.8 or 5.6. Other times I shrink it down to f20, f22. Or I just put it somewhere in between. It doesn't really matter because 
if I've set my camera to aperture priority and change one setting, the camera will adjust the other two settings. Shutter speed and the ISO. The ISO is how sensitive your image sensor is to light coming in. Sure, you can change things on those too, but most of my photos are done on aperture priority. But you can adjust your camera however you want. So if you can get your background to be blurry, that's the best shot you can get. Because it's the subject you want viewers to see, not really the background. So look at these photos and notice how the background is blurry. Do you know what day is the best day for wildlife photography? The day of the week that ends in Y. Okay. For real, that's all of the days. You know the best time of year to do wildlife photography? <laughs> Any month that has 28 days. You know what the best time of the day is to do wildlife photography? <laughs> Can you see where I'm going with this? Get outdoors with your camera and take photos of things that you like. And have fun. Enjoy the walking and the stopping, the looking and the listening. So camouflage is something you're going to have to pay a lot of attention to because wildlife critters survive by blending into the background, by staying still, by being on a surface that looks a lot like them, whether you're a spider or a dragonfly or a snake or a squirrel or a beetle. It helps to disappear so that predators don't eat you. Sometimes your subject will be sitting still to avoid predation. It doesn't want to be eaten. Sometimes it's sitting still just because it's resting. It's already eaten enough and it has nothing to do. And sometimes that subject is sitting still because it's waiting for you to move away with your camera. Here's what I take with me when I'm outdoors, like I am today. I bring a hat to block the sun to keep my face from getting sunburned. I bring a comfy pair of shoes and the clothes that go in between. I bring my phone, which is in my hand. It's a Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra 5G. Woo! <laughs> I bring my camera, which is a Canon EOS 80D and a 55 to 250 millimeter telephoto lens. <coughs> I 
I use this to do tiny bugs and to do birds in a tree, squirrels that run by, butterflies on a bush, lizards on a stump, everything. It works so simply. And then I have a little side harness thing that allows it to go in between. So it sits on my hip, and when I want it, I just pick it up and take a picture with it. I also carry a backpack. In the backpack, I usually have water, an apple, and if I need to bring a tripod, because I want to do still video, I want to do videos, I put it in the back. I keep it simple. I don't carry a lot. I don't carry extra lenses. Keep it simple when you go outdoors. So another important strategy that I use all the time is changing my angle. That means sometimes I see a creature facing me and I take its picture. And sometimes I walk around while it's standing still and I take a portrait. So that is your horizontal. You can take, you can keep moving at any angle and everyone presents a different view of the subject. Understand that a straight on view, either getting its face or its backside is the least useful. The best is when you get about a 45 degree angle. Now there's another direction and that is your vertical. So typically what you see on photographers is they're standing upright, looking down on a subject and taking a picture. And what you see is the top of the subject. It's a great photo to be on the eye level of your subject. That means you might have to kneel or squat or get on a stepladder. Just kidding. Of course, you can always take a picture looking up at a subject. This is typically what happens with birds. You're on the ground, it's in a tree branch and you're taking a picture. But sometimes what you can do is, if there is an insect that is about your chest level, kneel down and keep it at a higher level and then get your camera down low below it and take a picture looking upward at it. That's a cool photo. So consider those two, low, two ways of changing your, of varying your angle. The horizontal views and the vertical views. Pay attention to that. I am quite eclectic or diverse when it comes to my subjects. One minute I'm taking a picture of a mammal, a squirrel. The next minute I'm taking a picture of a bird, a cardinal. The next minute I'm taking a picture of a butterfly, an insect. The next minute I'm taking a picture of a frog, an amphibian. And then a snake or a lizard goes by or a spider captures my attention, or I see some centipedes and millipedes and roly-polies. I take pictures of whatever I come across, not just one thing. So if you're outdoors looking for one thing, you probably won't find it. But if you go outdoors and say, I'm just going to accept what nature has to show me, you'll find lots of stuff. Here's a simple strategy. Try to capture your subject with its environment around it. In other words, if it's on a flower, include the flower. If it's on a leaf, include the entire leaf, if possible. So, take a look at this tadpole and this frog and tell me, did I include enough of the environment? Now, look at these other photos and tell me, 
did I include enough of the environment to give you a picture of where this critter lives? So here's a fun strategy. I know you went out with a particular thought in mind of getting particular things photographed, but look for odd stuff, weird things. Now, for me, the most interesting weird things are things that people made. So take a look at a few of these photos and see what I'm talking about. Are they interesting? Do they capture your interest and make you wonder what it is or why it's there or how old it is? Okay, which one of those was your favorite? For me, it's that old house. It's actually on the side of the road on the way to this location. See, I'm walking around at Merchant Mill Pond State Park and I pass that old house every single time. To me, that house is interesting. What isn't interesting is all the deer fly that keep biting me right now. But it's the price you pay when being out on a trail. One thing you'll notice if you watch my videos is that I go to a lot of different places. Now I have some favorites. I love botanical gardens because they're manicured and organized and you don't have to worry about ticks or chiggers. Or deer fly like I do at this location. But I also go to arboretums state parks, um, city parks. <coughs> I do a lot of photography in my yard. <coughs> you can find wildlife pretty much anywhere. Okay, here's a strategy that you may and may not agree with me on. How many benches do you see? Just one. And that's what you should think about when you're taking pictures of flowers, for example. One is always better than one amongst many. So look at these photos and tell me, are your eyes focusing on the flower or are they distracted and looking around the rest of the picture? I try to find a flower that's all by itself. Oh sure, about a foot away there's a bunch more and then three feet away there's a whole giant cluster. But I try to find one flower on the edge of a cluster of flowers that I can find an angle with my camera and shoot a picture of just one. That's all I want in my photo. One flower.
here's probably the best advice I could give you. If you have a digital camera, take a lot of photos of whatever you're standing in front of. If you see a squirrel, stand still and take a dozen or more photos as it moves through the grass and up the post and across the bench and around the tree or across the parking lot. Take a bunch of photos because you never know which one of those is going to be the photo. Now sometimes that means you're just going to press your shutter button once and then again and then again and then wait 10 seconds and then press it again. Other times you're going to hold it down. I like to shoot in continuous mode. So if I press and hold that shutter button, it takes six or seven or eight photos per second. I do this because when something is moving quickly, you don't, you don't have the speed in that index finger to go click, 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 click fast enough. Plus most modern cameras have a continuous mode. So if you know about that, do it. If you don't, Google how to use continuous mode with whatever your camera is. Another thing that goes through my mind is opposites. I love to capture a light colored subject on a dark colored background or vice versa. So take a look at these pictures and, s and see what I'm talking about. I like to use the sun to highlight the veins of a leaf. Check out these photos. If you are hiking and you come across a bench, take off all your gear, sit down, and just listen to the sounds around you. So, which of these strategies is the most practical to you? Let me know in the comments below. Well, I hope that you enjoyed this video and that some of my strategies will be useful to you when you're outdoors looking for cool craters to take photos of. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and check out the other videos at my YouTube channel.